Tonight, a local man is working to turn a downtown Duluth building into a unique place to live. What industries he's hoping to appeal to. And on thin ice, as lakes begin to thaw, a look at how local agencies train to rescue those that fall through. And later, maple That's syrup season is upon us. World. Why experts and producers say spring-like weather is having a negative impact on the industry. From CBS 3 Duluth, this is the CBS 3 News at 10. Good evening, I'm Kristen Bakke. And I'm Anthony Matt. Thanks for joining us. Democratic frontrunners Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders are crisscrossing the country ahead of the next slate of presidential primaries. Six states will hold their votes next week, including the battleground state of Michigan. Ed O'Keefe is in Washington. This idea that we didn't have a movement, look at the results, look at who's showing up. Former Vice President Joe Biden is calling his campaign a movement, while Senator Bernie Sanders acknowledges that his movement has struggled to bring out new voters. I think that will change in the general election, but I am on it. Be honest with you, we have not done as well in bringing young people to the process. It is not easy. Yes. Ahead of next week's critical primary in Michigan, a state President Trump won by just over 10,000 votes, Sanders is highlighting his differences with Biden. Michigan was decimated by a terrible, terrible trade deals. NAFTA, PNTR with China, which cost our country some 4 million good-paying jobs. I walked the picket lines against NAFTA. I went to Mexico to see what NAFTA would do. Joe voted for those terrible agreements. Biden did vote for NAFTA, but the former vice president says he believes future trade negotiations should include input from labor and environmental leaders. After his surprising turnaround on Super Tuesday, Biden's campaign is getting another boost. I'm glad to say I endorse Joe Biden. Former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg, who spent more than $500 million on his own run, said he'll support Biden's candidacy. Mr. Bloomberg comes on board Biden other candidates and he will solidify his support with the political leadership. We're taking that on. We're running a grassroots campaign. But the Sanders campaign appears to be seeking to broaden support. This new ad featuring former President Obama is evidence of that. Bernie is somebody who has the virtue of saying exactly what he believes. Well, as you saw, that new ad includes a clip of Mr. Obama and Sanders back in 2016, on the day the former president decided to endorse Sanders' then opponent, Hillary Clinton. Sanders says he respects Mr. Obama's decision to withhold his endorsement. All right, Dave, uh, sounds like the snow is moving out for most of us across the region now. For most of us, though, it could linger for a few more hours okay. in the snow belt, of course. Preliminary snow totals coming in. Seems like Grand Marais, at least uh, up the hill a little bit there, is the big winner at almost seven inches. Hufflin, four and a half. Ely is there as well. Mellon, three and a half inches. Silver Bay, 3.2. Same deal for Guile. Duluth International, 2.2. And Superior, one inch straight up. Again, for most of us, the snow is ending as higher pressure pushes in, but the departing low pressure system could keep snow going and some advisories too for the snow belt until about uh, six o'clock tomorrow morning. Now we eye up the day planner for Friday and it's a very beautiful picture of the Moose Lake area in the background. It shows sunshine and that's what we should all get tomorrow, even towards the snow belt. The snow will end and it's partly cloudy in the morning, mostly sunny in the afternoon. 34 is about 4 degrees warmer than normal, but come Saturday, it'll be much warmer than that. We'll show you the estimates coming up in a few more minutes. Thanks, Dave. New at 10, U.S. Senator Amy Klobuchar is asking the top prosecutor in Hennepin County to begin an independent review of the murder conviction of Mayan Burrell. The black Minnesota teen was sentenced to life after an 11-year-old black girl was killed by a stray bullet. In a letter to the Hennepin County attorney, Mike Freeman, Klobuchar said, quote, significant concerns about the evidence and police investigation had been raised. In calling for an independent review, Klobuchar was yielding to increasing community pressure to reopen a case that interrupted her Democratic presidential primary run after the Associated Press published the results of a year-long investigation that uncovered major flaws in the case. There's a new way to get your real ID in Minnesota, which you'll need starting October 1st if you plan to fly domestically. If you can't find time to go to a state office to get the new ID, you can now take care of it right at the airport. The new office is in Terminal 1 at MSP in Minneapolis. There, travelers can ask questions and also apply for the new ID, but you'll need to plan ahead. The governor says your paperwork needs to be submitted by mid-June.
June 15th is that date. My pledge is to do everything I can to shorten the time that it takes to get that, but there's just a set amount of time that it takes to do all of the paperwork. You can't do it any faster. MSP is believed to be the only airport in the country where you can apply for Real ID. It's open Monday through Friday from 9 to 5 by appointment only. House Democrats have passed a big piece of legislation regarding family medical leave. It would create 12 weeks of paid family leave for the birth or adoption of a child, as well as for an illness or care for a close relative. The bill would create a $1.35 billion state fund every two years from a 0.6% payroll tax that would be split between employers and employees. In all, 300 new state employees would be needed to create the program that would not be up and running for another three and a half years. The bill's chances in the Republican-controlled Minnesota Senate are slim, as they say it's too costly. A similar measure passed the House last year, but went nowhere in the Republican Senate. Vice President Mike Pence is pledging that federal officials will lean into the fight against the coronavirus. The vice president commented from Maplewood, Minnesota today, where he visited with the leading maker of masks being used to stem the spread of the virus. After meeting with 3, 3M CEO Mike Roman and Governor Walls, the vice president toured the plant, wrapping up production of surgical masks ordered by the federal government and expressed how Americans can contribute to the efforts combating the virus. Unless you are ill, you have no need to buy a mask. And one of the ways that, that healthy Americans can support our efforts uh, to be there for patients and to be there for health care providers is to, is to not purchase masks on the commercial market. All of our At the meeting, the vice president also offered his condolences to those who have lost their lives due to the deadly disease. It's that time of year. The ice on our lakes is changing and fast, and that can lead to troubling situations for people out on the ice. To ensure safety for everyone, the Duluth branch of the U.S. Coast Guard and Border Patrol practiced ice rescue techniques on Lake Superior's Bayside today. Officials say working with different agencies allows them to learn from each other and be more prepared when they work together. In case cases do happen, there will be multiple agencies involved, so it's good to just uh, practice as we play, you know, for lack of better terms. And uh, it's nice just to get to know one another, right, yeah, different that's techniques. That's Fortunately, yeah. Coast Guard officials say they have not had to make many rescues this winter season. A Duluth man is trying to turn an old downtown Duluth building into what would be the city's first extended stay hotel aimed at serving hospital and construction workers. An extended stay hotel would allow guests a medium term stay time, meaning longer than your average hotel visit, but not a permanent home. CBS 3's Jesse Slater explains. A proposal in front of the Duluth Planning Commission would allow the creation of a small six-unit hotel remodeled in a building currently standing on East 2nd Street. While it's important to us that we continue to support our hotel industry, it's a critical industry in Duluth, we also want to make sure we have opportunities within our neighborhoods for people to really be able to experience um, just the really great spaces we have throughout neighborhoods in Duluth. Located in the heart of Duluth's medical district, this hotel would provide furnished units marketed to patients and employees of nearby hospitals, Essentia Health and St. Luke's. People who are maybe coming to work at one of our medical uh, institutions, but they're maybe not going to be long-term residents of Duluth, and so they need something that is a little bit shorter than a full-year lease. Um, but a little bit longer than, you know, a week in a hotel. Given Duluth's aging infrastructure, city leaders say they're excited to see this kind of reinvestment in a small building. It's an effective use of our existing infrastructure, and it's, it's creating an opportunity uh, for people to uh, realize part of Duluth's past and, and, you know, bring forth some things that um, you wouldn't otherwise find in a brand new building. We did reach out to Nick Christensen, who's proposing this project, but have not heard back. If the Planning Commission approves the request, the building permit application phase would come next. Still to come on Live Local CBS 3, why a mild start to March has maple syrup farmers singing the winter blues. And later, using trauma to teach how a Grammy winner is helping a class of Northwest Wisconsin students cope. How mild can it get around here on this date? Well, 57 is the record high. 1878. When we get to Saturday, I don't think we'll get that warm, but it could be close for a couple of towns. Tomorrow, eh, not quite that warm. We'll talk about how long the snow will last tonight and what the sun will do tomorrow coming up after our break.
Watch Anthony Mack weekdays at 6 and 10 p.m. on live local CBS3 Duluth. It's the extreme deal of the day. Call now and get fast internet for less than $20 a month. If you ever thought about switching internet providers, the time to do it is now. For a limited time, you can get Access Internet 60 with speeds up to 60 meg and in-home Wi-Fi for only $19.99 a month for one year. Plus, there's no contract to sign. This is your chance to get real high-speed internet without the high price. Call 855-330-4175 today. Your water softener needs salt. You buy it, lug it, pour it over and over. Save salt and the hassle with a Culligan high-efficiency water softener. The world's best. Click or call Culligan Water and start saving today. Stop by your local Super One Liquor for all your party and gathering needs. With locations throughout the Northland and northern Wisconsin, Super One Liquor has a commitment to delivering outstanding service, variety, and top-quality wines and spirits. And don't forget the massive variety of ice-cold beer and beverages, all at the low prices you've grown to expect. Visit SuperOneLiquor.com anytime to view our weekly ads and in-store specials. So stop by your local Super One Liquor store. Come for the service. Leave with the savings. What are you thinking? Thinking about burger fries and some pie. You know it's 9 o'clock in the morning. Well, then bring the pie first. It's back and better than ever. Hurry in today for Perkins Burger, Fries, and Pie Combo. For a limited time, enjoy any burger, crispy fries, and a slice of our famous pie. It's dinner, dessert, and a deal. Only at Perkins. Mark your calendars because on March 6th, Pike Lake will be having our kindergarten roundup. Last names A to J, come on down at 8.30 a.m. and K to Z at 10.30 a.m. Empire Roofing, it's about trust. Spring is here. It's time for a free roof inspection from the team at Empire Roofing. Empire's a local family business with outstanding customer reviews. Empire's also a GAF Master Elite roofing contractor. And GAF has released its revolutionary new HDZ shingles. They're so much better than old school shingles. They have an outstanding wind speed warranty. So important in this part of the country. Have your roof inspected now. Contact Empire Roofing at EmpireRoofingMN.com or call 218-724-5584. The CBS3 Duluth Weathermax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. Snow today didn't do so much for Minnesotans, although towards the Arrowhead it did. Yeah, 6.9 inches up the road there from Grand Marais. Snow is still continuing for some towns, though, even though it's ended for Minnesota and the western part of Wisconsin. Still looking at a lakeshore flood advisory for Ashland and Gogebic counties here till 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. And a winter weather advisory continuing till 6 o'clock tomorrow morning as well for Iron and Gogebic counties here. So once we get towards 6 a.m., though, things should start to clear up and the sun should come out even in those zones as a high pressure cell takes over from the low pressure that brought the snow here today. Uh, right now, how are things shaping up at Duluth International? Current temps 22 above, 75% for the relative humidity. There's a north wind going 10 miles per hour, but by tomorrow afternoon it should become southerly. Well, that'll turn up the thermostat around here and we'll go then from 30s on Friday to 40s, maybe even 50s for Saturday and Sunday. Air pressure coming up in the wake of the low pressure system now at 1,027 millibars. Taking a look at the temperatures, they're going to go down like International Falls as we'll get to them after we march across the rest of the region. Low 20s currently in the Upper Peninsula. Low to mid 20s for folks in Wisconsin. 26, for example, towards Hayward and Cable. Minnesota temperatures are fairly warm down around Moose Lake and Barnum at 27, but once you get across the Laurentian Divide, Ely's at 14. International Falls down to 3. So pretty chilly in the northern part of the arrowhead tonight and moderate temperatures for the rest of the region before the sun comes up tomorrow and equalizes those temperatures into the 30s for i think everybody here in our region current doppler map shows yeah i'm trying to prove the point here and the pudding in minnesota the snow has gone away and for much of wisconsin as well but it still could redevelop on the south shore for the snow belt and hence the advisories that will stay in effect through tomorrow morning and that lakeshore flooding advisory pretty gusty winds coming off the lake here towards the south shore could make for some lakeshore flooding troubles. So some of those stretches of highway get pretty close to the road. Watch out as you're passing through there. Tonight, well, I think the snow will wind down by about 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. And then that allows 
higher pressure to build in from the west. And with that southerly wind, we become warm. Maybe not so warm Friday, but Saturday and Sunday, pretty toasty, upper 40s to about 50. Once we get into Sunday, though, this low pressure system farther to the west will come aboard and we'll get another chance for precip like we saw today. Well, what are we seeing tonight in Minnesota? There's those low temps that I think will go from 2 well inland to 14 by the lake. Decreasing clouds for Minnesotans and for folks in the snow belt. That snow could continue till about 6 o'clock in the morning. Low temps there in the teens above. Tomorrow, high temps, mid to upper 30s for some towns in Wisconsin and the UP, lower 30s though towards Ironwood, partly cloudy sky builds in. Minnesotans get that partly cloudy sky as well with high temps there, and roughly in the mid 30s for a change a little bit cooler by the lake. Now, extended forecast here, there's the glorious period of Friday and Saturday with sunshine and warm temperatures. Then Sunday night and Monday, another chance for a little light snow. Then Anthony and Kristen, it clears up by Tuesday, but also cools back down to normal for at least a couple of days. Thanks, Dave. Well, love it or hate it, it has been a relatively mild winter so far this year. Yeah, but the change in weather patterns is actually creating some concern for many Wisconsin industries. CBS's Jamie Perez takes a look at how our changing climate is creating an uncertain future for some of Wisconsin's most profitable industries, like maple syrup. The sounds of Wisconsin's melting snow might make a lot of us excited for spring. But for many Wisconsin industries, like the maple syrup industry... It affects everything in our natural world. This sound reminds them of the impacts that our changing climate has on our future. Earlier warm-ups uh, and bud break are going to shorten the season. And that's what we're very scared about. One of David Stevens's passions is making his own maple syrup. And he's not alone. Maple syrup brings in about $7 million annually to our state. In order to get a good maple syrup season... What we look for are freezing nights, sunny and above freezing days. We get too warm or we do we stay too warm at night, we find the sap does not run. The future isn't looking too great. If we do continue to see these trends of warmer temperatures, it will shorten the window of sap. Winters are warming in Wisconsin. Spring is getting here sooner, and maple syrup season is getting shorter. As this trend continues, producers won't be able to make as much syrup, and you will end up paying more for it. But this story is not just about maple syrup. Cranberries, for example, bring in about a billion dollars to Wisconsin's economy every year. Those face an uncertain future. On top of that, there's even certain fish that can no longer live in our lakes because of the rising lake temperatures. The identity of our state is largely been been affected by climate change and continue to do so. Michael Nataro has been studying climate change at UW-Madison for two decades. He showed us these maps, color coding Wisconsin's warming trends and what the future trends will look like. In central and northwestern Wisconsin, that the amount of wintertime temperature warming has been in the order of three to four degrees Fahrenheit. And that's in the last 50 years. It's expected to continue at this rate in the next 50 years as well. Yeah, I think it will be a travesty. And as work is being done on the local, state, and national level to find a way to slow this down, Wisconsin's character industries face uncertain futures. By the end of the century, when we have a much shorter winter season, when we don't have frozen lakes, um, that's going to change our understanding of what is Wisconsin. Still to come on Live Local CBS 3, a special and notable guest for Bayfield students teaches them valuable life lesson lessons. We'll take you there after the break. CBS 3 Live Cams are brought to you by Kohler Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac. You're not just getting a car, you're getting Kohler. Welcome to Medical Insight, a weekly health care feature brought to you by the experts at Essentia Health. Here's your host, Louis St. George. Today on Medical Insight, Essentia Health cardiologist Jason Schultz explains transcatheter aortic valve replacement, which fixes the aortic valve without the need for open heart surgery. So the traditional way of fixing um, heart valves is the surgeons go in and take the old valves out and put new ones in. TAVR stands for transcatheter aortic valve replacement, so essentially just 
using catheters and, and oftentimes balloons to replace the aortic valve without the need to open up the chest. We talk a lot about TAVR because it's probably the most common thing that people perform, but we really see ourselves um, here at Essentia as a comprehensive valve program. If your valve is leaky, if your valve is sticky, if you have holes where they shouldn't be, there is a 99.9% .9 chance that we can treat that here at Essentia for you. We started doing this in 2013, back when TAVR was a relatively new thing, and we performed almost 450 of these procedures now and have really been delighted at how the program's grown. There's a lot of things that we've seen that we know exactly how to react to now. Most patients who need their aortic valve replaced are candidates for TAVR, which is a less taxing alternative to open heart surgery. In traditional surgery, someone's going to be in the hospital for five to seven days and may find that it's difficult to recover for a couple of months. And with transcatheter approaches and TAVR, it's usually one day in the hospital and within a week, you're kind of back up on your feet. I think that the TAVR program has really served as a springboard for really a comprehensive valve center and structural heart disease program. At Essential, we've, we've taken a lot of pride in not only performing a lot of these, but doing it with exceptionally high quality. For Medical Insight, I'm Louis St. George. To learn more about this and other health topics, visit EssentiaHealth.org slash Medical Insight. I grew up working in my family's supper clubs. This is where it started with us as far as the fish that we serve at Culver's today. We source the finest cod and batter each filet by hand and always cook it to order. That beautiful golden brown color and flaky on the inside. The fish fry is a Midwest tradition. It's about coming together as families, friends. I love bringing this tradition to guests everywhere. Mom and Dad would be proud. Welcome to Delicious. Get your new ski doo snowmobile at Duluth Lawn and Sport. My part-time service in the Army National Guard allows me to keep my community and those I care about safe from threats. Learn more about how you too can live and serve part-time close to home by visiting nationalguard.com. Catch Eye on Parenting every Thursday at 6 with me, Leanne Valdez on CBS3. Students in Bayfield had a special musical guest today, Grammy winner Bill Miller. The famous Native American musician shared not only his music, but his stories of how to overcome trauma. CBS 3's chief photojournalist Wyatt Buckner was there and brings us the music of healing. I'm sharing life experiences that I've had as a Native man and Native young man and dealt with the world. I want to encourage the kids in this community. I talked about our identity and not to let anybody else or other trauma can identify us. <laughs> he's funny. He's a funny guy. He looks for jokes and everything, but he's talented also. And, you know, he's going, he gone through tragedy with his mother and his son, and he can still get through that through what he loves is music. I think music in general of all types brings people together. He's such a success story, winning Grammys and uh, doing soundtracks for Academy Award winning films and coming from a small town in Wisconsin, not too dissimilar from Bayfield. And if the kids can see somebody like them coming from the same situation they came from, it might give them the impetus to feel like, man, I can do this too. Hearing his story just like gives him like inspiration to like not give up and just believe in yourself. Like those four words he said, I believe in you. Everybody needs to hear that. Even when I hear that, I'm like, oh my God, you do. Like, thanks. When someone believes in you, it's an amazing um, thing that happens to a child and to adults even. You say that and, and they, can, they can go on. They can, they can say, I, I, can, I can let go of things that I've been holding on to for the rest of my life. Change the world. I grew up with a lot of alcoholism and, and suicide and a fetal alcohol syndrome. I could name the list of negatives on the reservation, but very few people come back to look at the positives. I'm searching for the positives. We need to move on, and we need to make a strong impact on this community for all races. And that's what I, I want our kids to not be victims. Victory. That's what it's about. <laughs> Around 200 students had the chance to listen to Miller's music and message today. 
Neil Viersma is here now for a look at sports. What's going on? Well, guys, it's March, and you know that only could be one thing, March Madness. Madness. Yeah. Two spots are up for grabs in the girls' state basketball tournament this evening. Full highlights and reaction from Class 7A and Class 7-3A coming up right after the break. Thursday Night Face-Off is brought to you by Essentia Health. I'm Nick Bolton, and these days... Hey there. Hey there. It seems everybody has a pair of tactical sunglasses. Good morning. Good morning. But what if you already wear glasses? Then you need these flip-up tack glasses. These new glasses fit right over your existing eyewear to give you all the benefits of our tack glasses while you comfortably wear your regular glasses. Plus, like all tack glasses, flip-up tack glasses feature Bell & Howell light filtering technology that makes invisible objects suddenly become visible. There's just nothing like them on the market today. Here you go, buddy. Thanks, Nick. Act now to get your flip-up tack glasses for just $19.99. And we'll even ship them to you free. But wait, order today and you can get a second pair. Just pay a separate fee. Here's how to order. Call 1-800-699-7431 or go to flipupglasses.com. That's 1-800-699-7431 or order online at flipupglasses.com. In this place, we face obstacles like nowhere else. The clock, the trail, the hill. The challenge that's always waiting. When that challenge comes, we'll meet it together. Because this, it's your chance to show what you're made of. Tenacity, resilience, and the power to prove that the toughest competition comes from within. This is orthopedics and sports medicine like nowhere else. New ownership means new inventory. Link Rec is having our Clear the Deck sale. $4 million of new and used boats, engines, and accessories must go. All discounted with savings up to $22,000. Don't miss this once-in-a-lifetime sale. Something for everybody, something for every budget. Fondaloo's Casino is giving the house away. What? With over $100,000 in prizes. Every Thursday and Friday night from 6 p.m. to 2 a.m., we're drawing 35 prize winners for their chance to win up to $1,000 cash. Wait, what? How many winners? 35 winners every Thursday and Friday now through March. Stop by the Players Club or log on to FondaloothCasino.com for all the participation details. Thursdays and Fridays, we're giving the house away. So you'll have a great time out at Fondaloo. My 95.7 is the Northland's best variety all day. From Ed Sheeran and Maroon 5 to Lady Gaga and Brian Adams. Always family and office friendly. My 95.7, your life, your music. Sports are my passion and the love of my life. And when you watch a sports cast, the biggest compliment that I get is that you seem so excited about what you're talking about. And that's not an act for me. Who doesn't want to see someone, you know, deliver their news in a fun way? So if you love it, I love it, you're gonna see you're, you're gonna see the authenticity that I think I bring to CBS CBS3 Sports. <laughs> Watch sports with Kelly Hinseth on CBS3. Let the madness begin. The Section 7A title was on the line Thursday at Romano Gym. A rematch of last season as Cromwell Wright took on Mountain Iron Buell. The Cardinals have an early lead, but the Rangers kept it tight in the first half. Shasandra Ward knocks down the open look. MIB down just four at the half. But oh man, did Jeff Groner's team come out in the second. Taya Hakamaki in transition, passes on the layup and says, my cousin is open. Shaley Hakamaki, three points. The lead is 10. From there on out, a heavy dosage of Taya. The UMD commit on her future floor, hits three consecutive triples, and that's a pretty good night there. She was getting her own shot all over the court tonight. The step back down the hatch, Taya Hakamaki, 28 points. Cromwell Wright snaps MIB's nine-year section title streak. They're on to state with a 68-43 to win. Relief is a big word, uh, I have to say. It's a, uh, even though we knew that we had the better team, we had the uh, demons of last year in the back of our head, and I was very nervous coming into it. I just knew that we had knockdown shots. I had to get people open for threes and stuff and finish out the hoop well, and that's what we did. So I'm just, it's like unreal. I'm so happy right now. It's amazing. We were definitely hungry for this win. You know, that we knew that this was our year, and we did the job, so it feels absolutely amazing. It's not something everybody gets to experience, and you know, I'm beyond happy and proud of my team for helping us get here. 
In Section 7-3A, Hermantown in search of their first state tournament appearance in 14 years, matching up with the defending section champions, Hibbing. Under two minutes to go, Hermantown down one. Ellie Schmidt drives. Her initial shot is no good, but she comes up with the rebound and puts it right back up. 42-41, to 41, Hawks. Very next possession, Hibbing answers. Reese Ani off the screen. Gets the floater to go. Blue Jackets back in front, 43-42. A pair of free throws would put Hermantown up one. Then Schmitz converts here to make it 45-43. Last chance for the Blue Jackets. But the half-court heave is off the mark. Hermantown is back in the state tourney with the 45-43 win. We knew coming in it was going to be a tight matchup. And um, Hibbing's good. They're well coached. they got some great athletes. And um, I just feel fortunate to be able to beat a team three times in a row because that doesn't happen much in high school athletics. So we're, all, we're proud of the way our kids play tonight. It was very special because last year we were under 500 and we just wanted to do it for them and do it for a program. This feels great because we see the hockey team go down there every year and we just want to have that experience too and that we can do that. Speaking of those Hawks, it's been so far so good at the state tournament as Hermantown took down Monticello 7-1 in the Class A quarterfinals yesterday. Next up, they'll get St. Cloud Cathedral, a team they have already played this season at Hermantown Arena. And if you remember that game from back in January, it was a good one. Hermantown led 4-1 heading into the third period before the Crusaders stormed back. It went to overtime and ended in a 5-5 tie. The Hawks say they'll be ready this time around. Tell you one thing, everyone's talking about Cathedral on War Road, and we're loving it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we're the three seed, and that's fine, and we're fine with that. And we're uh, these boys are ready to go. I, I can tell you that. And we've wanted this to happen since January eighth or tenth or whatever that date was, where um, they came back and tied it in our barn. So we're excited. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're playing good hockey. We're playing good hockey, so it's gonna be a great semifinal game. Um, just out of state tournament, we, we need to take care, care, care of business. I mean, we just want to win. That's what we're doing, and, and we're ready for it. We're hungry. We want to win, so. Now that's all for sports. We'll be right back after the break. CBS3 closed captioning is brought to you by Essentia Health, St. Mary's Heart and Vascular Center. Heart disease is the leading cause of death in the U.S. Ask your doctor how to keep your heart healthy. What are you thinking? Thinking about burger fries and some pie. You know it's 9 o'clock in the morning. Well, then bring the pie first. It's back and better than ever. Hurry in today for Perkins Burger, Fries, and Pie Combo. For a limited time, enjoy any burger, crispy fries, and a slice of our famous pie. It's dinner, dessert, and a deal. Only at Perkins. The fun never ends at Black Bear Casino Resort. With over 1,800 of the hottest slot machines and our thrilling selection of table games and 500-person bingo hall. My place for gaming. From casual to fine dining, satisfy your taste buds at one of our three dining venues. My place for dining. And relax in comfort with all of our first-class amenities. My place to stay. Looking for the party? Look no further than the Otter Creek Event Center. My place for fun. Visit BlackBearCasinoResort.com and make the bear your place. So with DISH, you get The Hopper, TV's most powerful DVR. It holds up to 2,000 hours. It holds all your favorite shows. The raspberry cream mixture. Give it a jolly good turn. Oh, this is the one where she makes the decorative fondant out of meringue. What it does not hold? Perfect. Really, Clint? It holds no judgment. Love fondant. Whatever your passion, record up to 2,000 hours of it with Dish. Tuned in to you. Kelly Hinseth takes her job at full throttle. There's no slowing down. She's full of enthusiasm. Kelly brings a youthful exuberance to the newscast. She's loaded with energy. She's really passionate about sports. I think even if you're not interested in sports, she draws you in. She's always up and ready to go and ready to show us the latest in sports. Get to know Kelly Hinseth weekday nights on live local CBS3. Break out the kilt for an evening of Celtic celebration. The Duluth Scottish Heritage Association presents Thistles and Shamrocks, an evening of Scottish and Irish music and dance. Friday, March 6th at the College of St. Scholastica Mitchell Auditorium. Enjoy Celtic singing, dancing bagpipes, drums, and more beginning at 7 p.m. Tickets purchased at the door or at DuluthScots.org. 
Men's wardrobe provided by Mainstream Fashions for Men. Our buy one, get one for a buck suit and sport coat sale is now in progress. Hundreds of options. Mainstream, downtown Duluth. All right, Dave, a lot of us, the snow's cleared out. Some sunshine looming for tomorrow. Should exactly. be a nice day. Yeah. Although, again, for the snow belt, it hasn't completely cleared out. It may reappear for the next eight hours, so watch out there. But once we get into Friday itself, the sunshine comes back thanks to high pressure. Sunny on Saturday, 46 degrees in the Twin Ports. Inland, I wouldn't doubt a sometimes cracked 50. Then our next round of rain-snow mixes could come Sunday night into Monday. All right. Thanks for joining us. Have a happy Friday, Junior. We'll see you yes, tomorrow. Friday, Junior. <laughs>